Good morning. It is 9.32 a.m. my time here in glorious Illinois. <laughs> Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Luke chapter 4. I'm going to be going over a article sent on to us by our dearly, dearly beloved, which <laughs> this article, and we'll see this in a little bit, is so appalling. Um, it's, it's, the surprise onto me is the chutzpah, the arrogance of the whore, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism, Satan's church, and her army, the Jesuit order. I'm going to be reading to you out of the Catechism of the Catholic Church also today. But um, please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along in the scriptures, okay? Turn to Luke chapter 4. going to be going over uh, quite a few familiar verses onto the church and living God. But this video is not primarily intended for the church of the living God. This is uh, intended for those of you who are lost, more or less, okay? Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 on verse 7. Like I said, Church of the Living God, brothers and sisters, we've been through this countless times. Like I said, this video is not primarily intended for you, okay? And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, taking who up? Our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Satan tempting our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. All of Satan's temptations were aimed at one thing, the flesh, the skin suit, okay? And the devil taking him up into an high mountain, shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will I give it, but this condition, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all will be thine. Looking at verse 5, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain, way up high, higher above anything else, setting people on a pedestal, okay? What Satan likes to do, okay? And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The kingdoms of the world, the petty kingdoms of man. The kingdoms of men. Look at them out there, brethren. People, look at them out there, huh? Take your pick. Take your pick. Take your pick. What, what, what are you talking about? Oh, let's say you're interested in being a Christian which these satanic devils have totally destroyed that name, okay? But take your pick, look at them. You could, the kingdoms of men. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the, of the earth, Roman Catholicism, and all her daughters. You want to be a Lutheran? Hey, they're Christians, go ahead. It's a kingdom of man. What about being a Calvinist? You want to be a Calvinist? Sure. Look at all the glory of these kingdoms. Look at the heritage, the lineage of these kingdoms, right? Okay. You want to be a Methodist? Go ahead. Go right ahead. You want to be a Methodist? Go ahead. Huh? You want to be a Pentecostal? Go ahead. Look at all the kingdoms of the world. The devil will set you up on high so you can see all the glory and grandeur and splendor of these petty kingdoms of men. Hmm? You want to be a Baptist? Go ahead. Go ahead. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. All these 
flavors, all these divisions in what is called Christianity. All of them. Look at them all, man. Look at them. You got to sit back and stand in awe of what Satan has done to what the term Christianity, Christendom, is today. You really, you really got to stand back in awe of how Satan has been allowed to work as he has been working. And for those of you who do not know, who want a God of your own making, who want that man of sin, the son of perdition, a God who doesn't judge, a God who has no requirements. But there is a requirement. If thou, wilt, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. But he'll, he'll take you up on high and he'll show you all the flavors of Christianity. Because you lost people. What is a Christian? These guys, right? Catholics. You're right. They're Christians. Or no, what's the other one nowadays? Joel Osteen. Joyce Myers. Ray Comfort. <laughs> Paul Washer. That imbecile from Wretched Radio. Oh, oh, what about Jesuit James White? Yeah, he's a Christian. He's, I heard it myself. Jesuit James White? He also considers himself a Bible believer. <laughs> you got to stand in awe. You really do. Of just how Satan has duped so many. Because he sets you up on high. See? And the devil taking him up into a high mountain. Shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him... All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. Oh, think of the glorious tradition of the Lutheran Church. Hmm? Think about all the glorious tradition of Calvinism, hmm? of the Methodists, of the Pentecostals, of the Presbyterians, of the Baptists. All of this <laughs> and the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them. Look at the glorious history of these denominations. Look at them. What, is Christ divided? Apparently. Apparently, right? Because what? If you don't like one, you can go to another. Well, I used to be a Presbyterian, but now I'm a Methodist. Oh, <laughs> good for you. I used to be a Pentecostal, but now I'm a Baptist. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I used to be a Lutheran, but now I, I went back to Mother Church. That's what all Lutherans did. Yeah. And there's Satan. It's like, look at all the power and look at the glory of them. I ain't saying that no one within those petty kingdoms of men, it, within those uh, denominations, I ain't saying that there weren't people of the Church of the Living God within them. I ain't saying that at all. <laughs> but look at them. Look at what they have become. Look at what they have become. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. Amen it is. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. Satan's going to give you what you want. You don't like it in your one Christian church building? Go to another. You don't like the uh, precepts of that denomination? Go to another. He, he's, he's giving you a smorgasbord. You got, you got variety. And well, the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, does like variety. But when it comes unto salvation, our Lord Jesus Christ is very plain and clear when he says, I am the way, the truth. And the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Our Lord Jesus Christ is very clear. As he is clear through the scriptures. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 3 sometime. You'll know what I'm talking about. And here's the condition. If thou therefore wilt worship me. All shall be thine. All of it. 
All of it. You can, you know, join yourself and become a member of a church building. You can go ahead and be a Christian. Yeah, and join yourself to a denomination. Yes. Yes. You go ahead. And in doing so, you'll get up. <laughs> if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Entertainment. Pleasure. A little, a little to make you uncomfortable, but that, just a little, just enough so you can give your money to a church building. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Go to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, we will begin reading in verse 8 on to verse 11. Revelation chapter 2, beginning at verse 8, on to verse 11. And on to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. The first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and, o and the Omega, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Church of the living God, brethren, Oh boy, what's going to be coming upon us here sooner or later? Probably more sooner rather than later. How many of us are going to be made poor in things of the world? We are getting there ourselves right now. We're getting our we're getting there ourselves right now, you know? We don't know how things are going to get paid this month. We don't know. It's up to the Lord. But we have this reminder, no matter what happens to us on this earth, remember, our life is not tied up in earthly things. Our life is in heaven with our Lord Jesus Christ. For those of us who are saved of the church of the living God, for you lost people, there you go. There it is. Fall down and worship Satan. He'll give you everything. Go ahead. Fall down and worship Satan. All will be thine. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Remember that, brethren, church of the living God. We're rich. Not like this. We're rich in our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we have the creator of all things living within us. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Now, verse 9, there's a lot we can talk about on this. You, Church of the Living God, you already know this. I'm not talking to you. What is Jew? There will be links in the description box of this video. If you have the stones to watch those videos, please go ahead and do so. Okay? We, through the scriptures, go through and examine just exactly what is a Jew. Scripturally speaking... A Jew is someone who is under the law of Moses, scripturally speaking. Never mind. Never mind what these devils say. These guys are liars. This is Satan's church. Okay? Never mind them. Scripturally, what is a Jew is someone who is under the law of Moses. Okay? The law of Moses was given unto whom? The Jews? Yes. The Hebrews. The line, the chosen line of the Hebrews chosen out of Shem, okay? Shem, the three nations, the three uh, branches of the three base from where all the kindreds are from. Shem, the Asiatics, which includes uh, the North Koreans, the Chinese, the Japanese, um, the, those in Thailand and stuff like that. The Indians indigenous to this nation here, okay? Those are of Shem. And from Shem, God chose from Shem Abraham, who was at first Abram, okay? He chose Abram out of the land of Uz, okay? Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. And it was on to Abram who would become Abraham. The name Hebrew was first attributed onto. And onto the Hebrews, Ones who pass over, okay? 
unto the Hebrews was given the law through Moses. Okay? So, when it says here in verse 9, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Catholics, coadjutors, like to say this and twist it and say that the Jews are the all-powerful entity today. The Jews run the world. The Jews are the most evil. Trying to turn everything against the Jews just like their father and his church do. Okay? No. A Jew is someone who is under the law, the law of Moses, and the law was given on to the Hebrews. Okay? And the Hebrew, the Jew, is the apple of God's eye. God chose them because they were the smallest, the fewest of all nations. Okay, He chose them and set his love upon them for the Father's sake. Okay, So God's chosen people are the Hebrews, the Jews. And that cannot be disannulled. The Jew, even to this day, is the apple of God's eye. All right? The Jew is the apple of God's eye. And what these grotesque devil monsters have done, they tell you, and we're going to look at this article, these devils tell you that they have replaced Israel. It's called replacement theology. And they teach it openly. And right now, they're boasting, rubbing it into people's faces that the church has replaced Israel. So the Jew, and it, like I told you, and there will be links in the description box to prove, to back up everything that is being said. If you have the stones, watch them. Okay? Scripturally, a Jew is attributed unto the Hebrew. Okay? The Hebrew is the apple of God's eye. God's chosen people. That chosen line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob is Israel. Okay? Israel is the apple of God's eye, the Jew, the Hebrew, God's chosen people. We, the Gentile, have been grafted into their tree of the Jew to make them jealous, to bring them onto their God. But see, what these guys do, they tell you that they're the true Jews. They're telling you that they have replaced Israel. Hence, they, even though, even though, they do not come out and uh, literally say, we are Jews. No, they don't say, we are Jews. But you're going to see this article too. Um, they are claiming themselves to be the apple of God's eye. They have said that they have replaced Israel, that they are the new Israel, that the church, that it's the church that has replaced Israel. You're going to see that in this article given to us by our dearly, dearly beloved. Okay? You're going to see it. You're going to see it. So, those who say they are Jews and are not, never mind those wicked black Hebrew Israelites, okay? And no offense, you guys are a bunch of idiots. An idiot is someone who is void of logic and reason. And because of Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, you believe, you actually, you, you some of these devils actually do believe that they are true Israelites, that they're true Hebrews. It's impossible for a Hamite to be a Hebrew because the Hebrews derive from Shem. It is impossible for a Hamite to be a Hebrew. It, it's impossible. Absolutely impossible. It cannot happen. Okay? It cannot happen. A Hamite could become a Jew. Yes. Jew is someone who is under the law of Moses. But to be of God's chosen people of the Hebrew and in Scripture, Jew is always attributed on to the Hebrew. Okay? There are some that made themselves Jews. You read about that in Esther and whatnot like that. Okay? That became Jews. Yes, under the law. Okay? But God's chosen people are still the Hebrews. The apple of his eye. Okay? The apple of his eye. 
And then you've got Catholicism coming around in verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy, which Catholicism is, with their worship of the cookie. They are the ones who are blasphemous, okay? Of them which say they are Jews, which Catholics do, and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. And as we're going to see, unto the Catholic, there is no salvation outside the church. And the church of the living God is the body, not the building. But, 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 but see, these, these, these devils, these devils, what is church? You lost people. Come on, what's a church? It's a building, right? You run into these, these disgusting Christians. Come to church so you can learn of God. Come on, we need to get you to your church. Like that one wicked devil woman said to me the one time. It's like, well, where are you sending these people to? Uh, to our Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures? She was like, you're supposed to send them to a building. Where does that come from? It comes from Catholicism. It's Catholic. Why is it like that? Because in 19, what was it, 1984, I think it was, something like that, is when the Jesuit order overtook all the denominations and they gave a sign. They put up a, an obelisk in Washington, D.C. An obelisk, beg your pardon, is a male phallus. Okay? Beg your pardon. I'm not holding anything back, okay? The obelisk is a male phallus, okay? And a sign unto the Jesuits was when a president would take his oath of office in front of an obelisk, showing to the Jesuits that they have overtaken all the denominations of Christendom. That happened in 1984. That's from the testimony of Alberto Rivera, which will be in one of the videos, I think, that will be linked. Okay? So the Jesuit order, the military army of Catholicism, has overtaken all of the churches, all the church buildings, all of the denominations. And their, their doctrines have crept in unawares, hidden, veiled. That's why you hear so much in church buildings of tithing, which is not a requirement in this dispensation. Okay? That's why you have these Christians worshiping buildings, because that is what these devils do. To them, church is a building. To God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures, church are the people, not a building. To hell with your church buildings, boy. To hell with your church building. Okay? Let's continue. Yeah, that, you're gonna see. Uh, you're gonna see me get a little fired up because this. What we're gonna look at this article is just. Ugh. Let's continue though. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that he, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Hold your place here. Go back to the book of Luke, Luke twenty-two. Luke 22, verses 31, on to verse 32. Luke 22, verses 31, on to verse 32. Trying, a trial. And the Lord said unto Shimon, and the Lord said, excuse me, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. See, at this point, at this time, Peter was not a converted man. He wasn't, wasn't converted. He, he spake a good game. But when his feet were put to the fire, he denied the Lord three times atrociously. When the Lord said, Pete, you're going to deny me three times. I'm never going to. Okay, fine, whatever. And he did. And the Lord looked upon Peter. Oh. Mm. Mm. See, for us of the church of the living God, 
Trials are coming. They're already here for some of our brethren in other nations. But trials are coming. That Satan may sift us as wheat. Okay? We're going to find out who is and who isn't in times coming. Very quickly here. And now go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 on to verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 on to verse 13. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. See, there are a lot of people out there who are Christians, who take the name, we're a Christian. But when the feet are put to the fire, they're going to back off. We're going to see who really is who here coming up, here in these times coming. You thought it was... Uh, you thought it was shocking before. You just wait. You just wait. We're going to see who's who. We're going to see who trusts the Lord coming up here in the times coming, leading on to the redemption of the purchase of the possession. Erroneously called the pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? Well, let's continue in Revelation chapter 2. He that hath an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, the bodies of believers. He that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death. Now let's read verses 12 on to verse 15. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, and where Satan's seat is. Where is Satan's seat? in the Vatican. You know, they got that picture of the of Francis. <clears throat> Big part. They got that picture of Francis sitting on a throne with all that weird satanic devilly looking things. That's Satan's seat. That's Satan's seat. Satan's seat is not at Jerusalem. It's at Rome. Okay? Verse 13. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Satan dwells in Rome. That's where his main headquarters is. You're going to see in this article, you're going to see. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Sacrificed unto idols, the little wafer cookie, and the uh, wine cup, which the Jesuit priest has the magical powers to go woody, 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 and turn it into the actual flesh, which all Catholics worship, of Christ, and the little grape juice thing becomes the blood. Okay? But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. What is this a reference unto? Hold your place here and turn it into the Torah, the first five books of Moses, okay? To Numbers. Numbers chapter 25. Numbers chapter 25. What is this a reference unto? Numbers chapter 25. Numbers chapter 25, verses 1 on to verse 9. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. 
and they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. Why? Through the whoredom of Moab. Looking at Revelation chapter 2, verse 14 again. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine, the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, who taught Balak, who was the king of Moab, okay, to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication with the Moabitish women. They look like whores, all dressed up, looking nice and sexy looking, right? And because of that, because of that infiltration of this, because of the doctrine, the doctrine of Balaam, and what is the doctrine of Balaam in a nutshell? Integrating. Integrating. Just like at the Tower of Babel, which these guys call error. The separation. See, man, when man gets together, what happens? When all people get together, which is exactly what Roman Catholicism is trying to do, bring everybody together so that they may be ruled by the volition of a single man, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Today, that man is, is not the son of perdition, but the one who's ruling everything today is Arturo Sosa, the black pope, the head of the Jesuit order, okay? But Catholicism wants to bring everybody together. And you read in scripture, in Genesis chapter 11, I believe it is, when everybody gets together, okay? Man likes to do what? Build towers that reach unto heaven so that they can make a name for themselves. You know, it's the lie that Satan said, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? See, Catholicism wants to bring everybody together. When our God, our Father, our Lord, Jesus Christ, loves distinction and separation, okay? Catholicism wants to bring everybody together to be ruled by the volition of a single man. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father, he loves variety. He really does. He loves variety. When it comes to salvation, there is only one way. There is no other option. It is only by Christ Jesus, okay? You come to him on his terms. Broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord, and may he save you. But see, the, the daughters of Catholicism, the thieves and robbers, they go up some other way. They don't go through the door. And it's very interesting. Boot the door. What door are you booting? Is not Christ Jesus the door? Hmm. And when you think about it, Catholicism is doing just that. They're booting the door out of the way. And the door is Jesus Christ. And they're replacing it with themselves. Ah. It's so obvious. It's pathetic. But let's continue in Numbers 25. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Pure because of the women of Moab, which Balaam taught Balak to do to put a stumbling block before Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses. Midian, they brought it right in front of Moses. The chutzpah. Chutzpah. They, they didn't care. They were brazen. Rubbing it in the face of God's people. Just like they do. And in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. There's that mention of a door again. Mm. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. 
And he went after the man of Israel into the tent, and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel, and those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. It's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing, this doctrine of Balaam. Go back to Revelation chapter 2, picking up at verse 14 again. But when, but I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, integrating and fornicating with those outside. Okay? Look at Christianity. Integrating. Bringing in Muslims, sons of Ishmael. Atheist, why can't, why can't a Christian be a Buddhist? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. And because of that doctrine of Balaam within what is called Christianity. Look at it, man. Look at it. You lost people. You know this better than I do. And for some, <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> they're not all of us, but for some reason... A lot of these Christians got their heads up twixt their buttocks about it. And that's something. And that's something. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So hast thou so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. What is a Nicolaitan? Nicolaitan, someone who sets themselves up, oh, kind of like a pope, to rule over the laity. Okay? Skip down now in Revelation chapter uh, 2 here, to verses 20, and let's read verses 20 on to verse 24. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman... Jezebel, Jezebel, the wife of Ahab, who basically controlled her husband Ahab. She killed, um, oh, what was his name? Not Nabal. Oh, she killed, uh, got somebody killed who her husband wanted his, um, I can't remember. I can't remember off, uh, offhand the name of the guy um, whose vineyard, Ahab wanted. And when he said, no, I'm not going to give you my vineyard. It's, it belongs to my family. And Ahab went back and was a little sissy boy and sucked his thumb and cried with his face to the wall. And Jezebel comes in, What's, you're the king of Israel. What's wrong with you? He's like, oh, he wouldn't sell me this. And she's like, don't worry about it. I'll write a letter in your name and have this guy killed. I can't remember the name of the guy right now. I've drawn a blank. She's done that. Jezebel in all her ways, painted her face when Jehu came and she looked at him and said, Had Zimri peace who slew his master? Okay. Jezebel is a type of the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> in every way, shape, and form. Okay. So, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, Jezebel, who is a type of the Roman Catholic Church. How many people of you uh, who are Christian, okay? You go to your church building. How often do they talk against Roman Catholicism? No, because God loves everybody. Everybody's got to come together. Ecumenicalism, which was created by these devils, okay? Your church building, do you hear people talking against Catholicism? Some of you Baptists might be like, well, yeah. It's like, okay, okay. Are, are they connecting the dots for today, telling you that the Jesuits, the truth of the matter, that the Jesuit order was the one that created the psychological operation? Hmm? Hmm? Are they glibly just putting a little salt and pepper on Catholicism, or are they going right to the matter? No, they aren't. Are they? Why is that? Because Christianity, the church buildings, are owned by Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That's why. 
Christianity. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. See, Catholicism has crept into what is called Christianity. That's why, personally, I want nothing to do with what is called Christianity. I'm of the Church of the Living God. You watch my videos that the Lord has given me to do. Okay, they're not my videos. The Lord has given me. Beg your pardon. Okay, but you watch the videos that the Lord has given me to do. I have, the Lord, has, you know, I've gotten rid of the word Christianity, except for situations like this. Roman Catholicism has destroyed what is called Christianity. And see, when we as the Church of the Living God encounter you lost people, Church of the Living God, what are you going to do? You're going to spend 20 minutes, 50 minutes trying to explain to someone the differences between, okay, well, well, all these people are calling themselves Christians. What makes you different? You're a Christian. Cut it off. Cut it off. No, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Christian. Uh, oh, but that's not a doctrinal issue. You're right. But God is a God of distinction, isn't he? Isn't he? And not a doctrinal issue. Okay? A lost person goes to what is Christian? The doctrines. What is it? The doctrine of Balaam and the these doctrines that are taught by Jezebel? But they're Christian? Huh. Verse 21. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her now. This is our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. Okay? God the Father. Uh, if you have a set of scriptures that have red words, this one doesn't. Um, this is the same one, the same Jesus that is in that Sermon on the Mount, which is how it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven, okay? Which is all works, okay? Faith is mentioned one time in a form of a rebuke. There's not one lick of mention of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Which is, boots, surprise, surprise, the Catholics love the Sermon on the Mount, okay? But listen to the sweet little Jesus who doesn't judge Listen to his words here. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. I will kill her children with death. That's Lord Jesus Christ talking right there. You... Ugh. Disgusting ecumenical pond scum? Yeah, that's Jesus Christ talking there. Uh huh. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am He which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give on to every one of you according to your works. Cross-reference this with Jeremiah chapter, what is it? 17 verses 9 and 10? Go ahead. Go ahead. If I've messed that up, my brother from Croatia, correct me in the description box or in the comment section if I messed that up, okay? Thank you. Verse 24. But unto you, I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as, as, many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. Gotta be careful whom you mingling with. 
And because this doctrine of Balaam, this doctrine of Jezebel, doctrine of Catholicism has infiltrated and taken over Christianity, what has it resulted in? What has it resulted in? Jeremiah chapter 5. Not 1 Samuel. Boy, did I overshoot that quite a bit. Jeremiah chapter 5. Not 25, Brad. Jeremiah chapter 5. We want verses 25 on to verse 31. What is the result of all of this? This Christianity. What is the result of it? From the infiltration, the overtaking of the Jesuit order. With all your denominations. What's the result? Let's look in the Old Testament about this. Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 25 on verse 31. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. Because you want the sweet words of a harlot whispering into your ear. For among my people are found wicked men. You know, these wicked men who come in unawares, saying that they are of the church of the living God, but yet they turn out <laughs> just to be a Christian. Okay? For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait. As he that set a snares, they set a trap. They catch men. That's what all these devils do. These people who are calling themselves King James Bible-believing Christians. Uh, you know what? They are Christians. They are Christians. Their mother is Christian. And their father is that man of sin, the son of perdition, Satan himself. Okay? As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Oh, and I can name a lot of them, but I'm not going to. I've already done that before. You know who you are. Scumbags. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. Hold your place here. Go to Revelation chapter 18. What was that? <laughs> Revelation chapter 18. Uh, I'm not using my normal s sets of scriptures here. I wanted, I, I hardly ever use this one, so I'm going to, I decided, I'll use this one today. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 27. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great and waxen rich. But our Lord said of those who are of him, of the church of the living God, we have poverty, but yet we are rich. Huh. You cannot serve God and mammon. Love not the world or the things of the world, which Catholicism does. Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 under verse 3. This is the destruction of Roman Catholicism. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Couldn't come soon enough. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Getting the tie in with Jezebel and the daughters of Moab, okay? Uh huh. Catholicism. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Look at the church buildings. Look at these televangelist bastards. They don't know who their true father is. They were created by God, but they're worshiping Satan. So, yeah, they're bastards. These spiritual bastards. Okay? More about this woman. Who is this woman? 
Like I told you, Jezebel is a type of the Roman Catholic Church. And the doctrine of Balaam that taught Balak to put a stumbling block for the children of Israel. It's a total picture of what Roman Catholicism is and has done and is doing. But look at this. Revelation chapter 17. Brethren, we know this. Understand, brethren. Lost people watch these videos. Babes, oh boy. Babes watch these videos. Bear with me. Okay. Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 6. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And in verse 15, which we will not be looking at, the waters are clearly def uh, defined as peoples, nations, and, land and tongues. Okay, So great waters, upon many waters, is a type, an allegory, if you will, more on that in another video, of, of peoples. Okay? So let's continue. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Are people going to Jerusalem to kiss the foot of the head rabbi? Hmm? Are all the political leaders going around wanting to go to Jerusalem? <laughs> Come on now. Where are they going? Are they coming to Smoking Joe? Kamala Harris? Who is the actual president? <laughs> no. No. They're going to the puppet man. They're going to the puppet pope. Francis. They're going to the Vatican. I call Francis the puppet pope because Francis is a Jesuit. And according to the teachings of the Jesuit order, every Jesuit is subservient unto their provincial. And the head of the Jesuit order is Arturo Sosa. So... And he's the black pope. Black because he hides in the shadows, okay? The head of all of Catholicism today is Arturo Sosa, not Francis. But where are the nations and kings going today? Now, there's a video on this on this channel. There's what more needs to be said, I think it's called. Whereas uh, our imbecile president, our uh, puppet president, here in America, went and spake with uh, the puppet Pope. <laughs> Talk about theater of deception. Okay? They're going to the uh, Catholicism. They're going to the Vatican. Okay? They're not going to Israel. They're not going to Jerusalem. Okay? Catholicism, the Jesuit order, wants you to hate the Jew, the Hebrews. Okay? Let's continue here in Revelation chapter 17, verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away, note, been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The doctrine of Balaam and Jezebel, teaching people to commit fornication and eat things sacrificed on the idols. Uh-huh. Okay. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Names of blasphemy? Lutheran, Calvinism, Methodist, Presbyterian, Baptist, Pentecatholic. Yeah, that, that's, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's just what came to my mind. Well, let's, let's continue. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, the colors of Catholicism. No, it's not. It's gold and white. No. You look at the processions of the cardinals and the bishops. It's purple and scarlet. See, imagine this. It's a ruse to make you... To get your attention away from what Mystery Babylon's true colors are, purple and scarlet. But yet when you see the procession of the bishops and the cardinals and all that stuff, her colors are purple and scarlet. Catholicism's colors. Okay. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls and having a gold and having a golden cup in her hand. 
and uh, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Right away, you think of the satanic mass, okay, where they have a golden cup and all the ornate beauty of Catholicism and the rings and the jewelry. It, it's so sodomite, okay? The glamour, the glitz. It's, it's a drag show, which is Catholicism, okay? It's so obvious, okay? And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Roman Catholicism calls itself the mother. But see, Catholicism is in what is called Christianity. They are Christian. Catholicism is Christianity. Okay? That's why we need to drop it. But, never mind. Okay? Catholicism is Christianity. And these Christians are made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Uh, look at verse 9. The identity of this woman. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Seven mountains of Rome, where the original papal chair is, they moved it. See, see, they do these sleight of hand things, these sophistry, these facade things. For example, right away, you think, well, Catholicism's colors are purple, are, are white and gold. No, God says they're purple and scarlet. Seven heads. Well, the, the, the seat of the Vatican doesn't sit on seven uh, mountains. Where it was in originally, yes, it does. Okay? It's Catholicism. Okay? And here is the mind which hath wisdom. Wisdom. What is wisdom? The fear of, of the uh, Job 28, verse 28. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. Fear of the Lord. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And let's look at verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. That's not Jerusalem. That will be Jerusalem when our Lord come back at his second coming with us, his bride, the church of the living God, okay? When he come back with us, then it will be. But it is not Jerusalem. That great city, Rome, Vatican City. That's who Mystery Babylon is, people. Church of the Living God, you, you know this. Babes and newcomers, they don't. Okay, so bear with me. Okay. Now, back to Jeremiah chapter, 20, uh, chapter 5, picking up at verse 28. <laughs> and about Catholicism, they are waxen fat. They shine. Oh, don't they look so pretty? Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the, right of the, uh, and the right of the needy do they not judge. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be... Hey, Ben! God has a soul? No! Really? <laughs> You've been to church recently, buddy? Ah. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? What, what am I doing that for? Catholicism from their inception. The first thing that they began teaching people was one God that com is comprised of three divine persons. You look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I think it's verse 24, I believe, somewhere in there, but in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, you see what a definition of a person is. A person is a spirit, a soul, and a body. 
Catholicism tells you that there's one God comprised of three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. But yet they say there's one God. That's impossible. How can three persons be one? That's impossible. No, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. The Father is the soul. The Word made flesh is the body. Okay? The flesh itself is not God, you disgusting scumbag heretic. Okay? The Word, the Spirit, the, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Okay? Dear people, watch out for these Catholics who worship skin, the skin suit, and tell you that God is one God comprised of three persons. That's a Catholic, and Catholics are Satanists. End of story. Okay? Verse 30. And because of all this stuff, the doctrine of Balaam and of Jezebel and all this stuff that Catholicism has done, what is happening? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. <laughs> and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? What will you do in the end thereof, people? What will you do in the end thereof? And because of this, because the prophets prophesy falsely, go to Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. Verses 13 on to verse 16. Wherefore the Lord saith, Oh, excuse me. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts from far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. That's that's what this the catechism this is the this is the bible to the catholic okay this is what this is this is the precepts of men these are the commandments of men god has nothing to do with it the little g god of this world has everything to do with it but god our father our lord jesus christ who is the author of the scriptures has nothing to do with this nada zilch zip kaput nothing okay Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall per perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? Surely, Catholics, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Have they not turned the world upside down by some fictitious plague that is the worst plague known to mankind? Well, people are getting sick. Yeah, by a biological weapon that they have created, not this phantom thing that they have created. That's a psychological operation to put you people into fear. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? Exactly what Catholicism is doing and has done. And while we're in Isaiah, go to Isaiah chapter 30, verses 8 on to verse 11. See, because of the infiltration of Catholicism and destroying what was called Christianity, 
and the doctrines that they have instituted and these Christians in church buildings. The priests bear rule by their means. And you love to have it so. You don't want to hear about, like what we read in Revelation about how Jesus is going to cast them into a bed and kill her children. To you, red word, red word Christians, you're, that's like, oh, must be a different God. No. <laughs> the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New. One God. We There is only one God. Okay? <laughs> but yeah, these red words Christians, I only pay attention to the words of Jesus in the New Testament. What about the ones in Revelation? I've, I put that, I've, I've seen that with my own two eyes. <laughs> I've seen that. You know, people just kind of like cut the conversation off and run away or get mad at you and Stuff like that because you bring them to this like, well, look at what Jesus said. Well, that's not my Jesus. You're right. It's not your Jesus. Your Jesus is the son of perdition. Not my Jesus. <laughs> Isaiah 30, verses 8 on and verse 11. Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. That this is a rebellious people. Lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Which say to the seers. See not. And to the prophets. Prophesy not to us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy to seeds. People go to a church building. Someone who's aspiring or whatever. It's like. Don't say anything about it. Don't say anything about the Catholics. Don't say anything about the Jesuits. Don't say anything about other denominations. Don't make people aware of evil uh, teachers and stuff like that. Um, don't, don't talk about political things. Definitely don't do that. Uh, encourage people to take the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Encourage people to bow down to Mystery Babylon. Definitely, but don't and don't say anything that's going to scare them off because we don't want to scare them off. We want to love them into the kingdom. You tell me, is that not what the church buildings do? And those that are of them, that's Catholic, would say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not to us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Get you, get out of the way. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Yeah, preach to us our Jesus who loves everybody, who doesn't judge. Love is love. <laughs> preach to us our Jesus. Don't preach to us the Jesus Christ, God our Father of the Scriptures. God who judges. A God who unto whom vengeance belongeth. A God who kills people. No. 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 <laughs> yeah, you, you go ahead. You have your little you have your little Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. And because, okay. People have been conditioned. They don't want to hear truth. They want to hear fables. Okay. They want to hear fables. And th this is the scriptures, by the way. The authorized version of the scriptures. The King James Version. This is the scriptures. Over here, this is where I got them. There's a difference between a Bible and a scripture. Yes, Biblos. Yes, genius. Yes, Biblos, a collection of books. Yes. But how do you make a distinction between them? Does this not say Bible on it? Right? Which is a collection of books. So, which one is true? Ask Jesuit James White. He'll tell you. But see, the Bibles, such as the NIV, the ESV, the New King James, uh, there, there are so many. What is it? The Holman Christian Standard, the Christian Standard Bible, uh, the Mess, uh, uh, 
to Geneva. Okay? <laughs> Come on, people. This is the scriptures. But see, those of you that are kept purposely in ignorance so that you will not question the masters. You're kept in ignorance, purposely. And it's at the point now where it's willfully, willfully. Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 17 on to verse 22. And as for you, my flock, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet? <laughs> you look at the you look into the translation committees and stuff like that that have Jesuits on them. You look at how man has trampled on the Bibles. And these Bibles, which are being fed to the Christians, they're muddled, muddied with the feet of the harlot. Where did we start? Oh, uh, yeah. Verse uh, 19. Where did we see? Yes. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye, Roman Catholicism, have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. You see these pastors like John MacArthur and all of them standing up there speaking to a congregation, reading out of an ESV or the New American Standard. I forgot about that blasphemy uh, and stuff like that. What are they doing? What are they doing? You know, your Justin Peters, your Paul Washers, your Jesuit James White, all these guys. What are they doing? As for my flock, people who really want to know and hear, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. Because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder, and pushed all the disease with your horns, till ye have scattered them abroad, Therefore, will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. And of course, let's touch on Amos, or let's touch on Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 12. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing of the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Hmm. Now, there are those out there who think that during the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, which is Israel's trouble, that the scriptures will not be available. They will be available. They will be available. But you got to remember too, brethren, people, during the time of Jacob's trouble, midway through the that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to institute the mark of the beast, which is something to do with the right hand or in the forehead. Probably a microchip in the right hand or some kind of barcode in the forehead. And the scriptures plainly tell us that whosoever receives the mark of the beast in their right hand, in their hand, or in their forehead, you're going to hell no ifs, ands, or buts. And you got people like John MacArthur, Gene Kim, Robert Breaker, uh, uh, what was that, um, who else? There's a couple other of these big guys out there who tell you that you can take the mark to uh, provide for your family, but then when the tr uh, time comes, cut your hand off or gouge it out of your forehead. no. No, no. And see, during that time, see, once you take that mark of the beast, your mind is going to be alienated against God because you're damned to hell. 
the scriptures say so. Today, the steel of the Jesuit poignard has that VMAT2, the fun vax, has that VMAT2 inhibitor in there that affects the pineal gland, which is right before, right between your eyes. That's why Hindus wear the red dot, because that's symbolizing the third eye, okay? And those who have that within their system, they're inhibited from the things of God. Today, the steel of the Jesuit poniard is not the mark of the beast. I do believe that someone who has taken the steel of the Jesuit poniard, I do believe that they can still get saved. It's going to be difficult for them because they have taken something that directly affects their pineal gland, that affects their seeking the Lord. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, it says plainly, you take that mark of the beast, you're going to hell. See, verses 11 and 12 will reach its fulfillment during the time of Jacob's trouble when the mark of the beast is there. Today, here are the scriptures. Here are the scriptures. But see, for today, you got people wandering all over, coming up with new evidence of this, new evidence of that, saying, yea, hath God said, okay? Uh, the Sacrita Monita talks about that, about how the, the Jesuits will provide new um, transcripts and new stuff like that, okay? New things, new evidence, new uh, Greek texts or new parchments being found. See, during the time of Jacob's trouble, when people's minds are going to be so alienated and affected from the Lord, this is when that's going to have its fulfillment. Today, it's confounded. It's been it's confusion. Why? Because there are so many Bibles. There are so many. Look at them all. Look at them all. And what do they do? Mark chapter seven. What is what are they doing? Mark chapter seven. We've already kind of touched on this, but we're going to hit it again. Okay. So you have no doubt what Roman Catholicism is doing. Mark chapter 7, Mark chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 13, our Lord Jesus Christ speaking. He answered and said unto them, and we already read this in Isaiah, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whosoever curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is a gift, that uh, it, that it, ah, beg your pardon. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corban, that is to say a gift, that scripture defines itself, By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered. And many such like things do ye. And what do they do? Also, they use philosophy. Oh, oh, I think I showed it in a uh, Jesuits, Catholics. Oh, they love philosophy, the wisdom of men. They love philosophy. They absolutely adore it. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Catholics, and you're going to see this in this article. Beware! Lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the wisdom of men, and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. First Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 
verses 1 on to verse 3. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, this, the spirit of Catholicism, that spirit of Antichrist, okay? And doctrines of devils, doctrines of Catholics, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You ever seared a steak? You know, burn it on one side, burn it on another side, then you cut into it and it just go explode all over the place. Mm -hmm. You can't kill your conscience. You can sear it, though. Verse 3, forbidding to marry, as Catholics do, but not only Catholics. Men go their own way movements, the New Age thing, and other religions, other daughters of the whore, also forbid to marry. But see, they all have one source, Roman Catholicism. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay? Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, Islam, Catholicism, Buddhism, Hinduism. A lot of people don't like pig for some reason. You're missing out. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Verse 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified, verse 5, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Hence, this is what Catholicism has done. This is what Catholicism is doing. Now, let's get to this. All right. <laughs> I had accidentally turned off this device or whatnot, so, but I just remembered. I have a video editor where I could put these two together. So you're going to see at about one hour and 21 minutes within the previous video, it's going to be kind of off a little because I turned it off. But anyway, we're going to get to this video. Okay. Until we're going to get to this. We are going to get to this article. The Catholic Church. Catholic Church is biblical Israel. <laughs> Incredible. Okay. Let's read this. The Catholic Church has traditionally understood itself to be the new Israel. Catechism of the Catholic Church, 877. Let's, let's check out what these guys say about that. 877 in the Roman Catholic Catechism. 877. Well, first of all, I'm going to be reading out of the Roman Catholic Catechism, uh, on page 244, eight, their verse number 846. Here, check that out if you can, where my uh, fingers are. Okay, you see that? Okay. Here's what they teach. Outside the church, there is no salvation. And remember, when the Catholic says church, they're not talking about the body. They're talking about a building. Just like the Christians are talking about today. You know, the Christians that go to these church buildings. They say, you got to go to church. Unchurched people, okay? That's what they're talking about. They're not talking about bodies. They're talking about buildings, okay? Outside the church, there is no salvation. How are we to understand this affirmation uh, often repeated by the church fathers? We formulate it positively. It means that all salvation comes from Christ the head through the church, which is his body. Basing itself on scripture and tradition, the council teaches, the Council of Trent, that the church, a pilgrim now on earth, is necessary for salvation. Church is necessary for salvation. See, when they say church, they mean a building, not a person. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? So, the church, the buildings, are necessary for salvation, according to the Catholic. A pilgrim now on earth is necessary for salvation. The one Christ, interesting wording there, 
is the mediator of and the way of salvation. He is present to us in his body, which is the church. He himself explicitly asserted the necessity of faith and baptism, and thereby affirmed at the same time the necessity of the church. And they're talking about a building, which men enter through baptism as through a door. Christ referred to himself as the door. So, and they're saying that baptism is a door. Gee, I wonder what door the Catholics are actually putting their boot to. I wonder. Hmm. Hmm. Hence, they could not be saved knowing that the Catholic Church was founded as ne as necessary by God through Christ would refuse enter would refuse either to enter it or to remain in it so right there they're saying that the catholic church is the only way to salvation okay and they're saying 877 let's read what they say here in 877 likewise it belongs oh here 877 what they're quoting okay Likewise, it belongs to the sacramental nature of ecclesiastical ministry that it have a collegial character. In fact, from the beginning of his ministry, the Lord Jesus instituted the twelve as the seeds of the new Israel, but they were Jews, Hebrews, and the beginning of the sacred hierarchy, chosen together, they were also sent out together, and their fraternity and their fraternal unity would be at the service of the fraternal communion of all the faithful. They would reflect and witness to the communion of the divine persons, their satanic hellish trinity. For this reason, every bishop exercises his ministry from within the Episcopal College. In communion with the Bishop of Rome, the successor of St. Peter, and head of the college, so also priests exercise their ministry from within the Presbyterium of the diocese under the direction of their bishop. See, scripturally speaking, Paul was the only one that made it to Rome, not Peter. Paul was the apostle to us Gentiles while Peter was the apostle unto the circumcision, the Jews, the Hebrews. Hence, that is why Catholicism is exalting their Peter so much, because they teach that they have replaced the Jew. Okay? So that's why Catholicism and the Jesuits focus so much on Peter. Okay? When historically, they, Peter never was at Rome. You can't prove that through scripture. Catholicism is the one that has rewritten history, remember. Okay? That's what that's their uh, uh, fascination with Peter. That's why they made him the first pope, because they're using Peter as a crux to justify their own position as replacing Israel. Okay? Let's continue. Just as Israel was God's people in the Old Testament. The church is his people now, and to many in our culture, this sounds extremely arrogant and possibly even anti-Semitic. It seems like we're saying that God has rejected the Jews and chosen a new people to replace them. However, that couldn't be further from the truth. With St. Paul, the church affirms that God has not rejected his people from the Old Testament, Romans 11, 1 through 2, 1 through 2. And the way we understand our position as the new Israel involves a lot more nuance, ah, nuance, yeah, than simply saying that the, that the church has replaced the Jews in God's eyes. So what exactly does this mean? How exactly can we say that we are the new Israel without disparaging the old Israel? 
Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 1. Well, uh, Romans chapter 11, excuse me. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Oh, let's read on to... <laughs> let's read on to verse 11, shall we? The Lord allowed me to do a video on Romans 11, which will be in the description box, okay? So, Romans 1, verses 1 on to verse 11, okay? I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid! For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Watch ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, let's keep reading, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it. Election, those who have gone the way of the cross. You know, Christ is the door that have gone the way of Calvary, the cross, his conditions, okay? That's what the election means. It's not the satanic, Calvinistic, elect and non-elect, okay? What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it. And the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare and a trap, and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come on to the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. What's happening here? Hold your place here and go to Ephesians chapter 3. See, what Catholicism doesn't do, they do not rightly divide the word of truth. A dispensation onto a Catholic, you ask a Catholic, uh, you say anything about dispensationalism or dispensations, they say, oh sure, we believe in dispensations. That's something that their Jesuit Pope gives them. But, to rightly divide the word of truth, what is the mystery? Okay, what is the mystery? We see here in Romans chapter 11, verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather the... Rather, through their fall, salvation has come on to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Had the Jews, had Israel, Jewry, accepted their Messiah? It could be argued that none of this would be happening right now. It was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 53 that yes, Israel was going to reject their Messiah. Okay, yes, and it's also prophesied in his Isaiah that it would go on to us Gentiles. Yes, but see, God had to offer it regardless or else he wouldn't be just fair or equal. Okay, see, that's the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And see, what Catholicism is not doing, they are not dispensational. They are not rightly dividing the word of truth. See, unto the Catholic the time of Jacob's trouble, which they call the Great Tribulation, is for the purification of the church. No, no, no. It's the time of Jacob's Israel, the Jews' trouble, okay? We, the church of the living God, are not going to be there. Christians are going to be there. But the church of the living God, we get redeemed, caught up, 
before the time of Jacob's trouble. And see, before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay, that was still the Old Testament. Because the death of the testator brings in the New Testament. Okay, you read about that in Hebrews chapter 9. The New Testament began with the death of the testator, not the birth, okay? With the death, burial, and resurrection and the shedding of his blood on the cross at Calvary, okay? When he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, that brought in this current dispensation. But until then, it was still doctrinally the Old Testament because the perfect sacrifice for sins had yet to May. You read about that in Hebrews chapter 9. Okay. So as we see in Romans chapter 11, verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 7. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to given me to you, word, how that by revelation, he revealed it to him, he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words. Mystery. What is this mystery? Let's keep reading. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of man, sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Look at verse 5. Which in other ages, other dispensations, was not made known unto the sons of men. What does that mean? They were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. Okay? Why? Because this was revealed unto Paul in this dispensation. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2, 15. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, that you be a workman who needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Other ages, other dispensations. Okay? This dispensation. What is this mystery in this dispensation? These, these satanic devils are all about mysteries. Yeah, because they keep people ignorant, okay? They keep people ignorant through their Bibles, through their doctrines and traditions of men, okay? But they keep them ignorant. What is this mystery? Let's, let's read. What is this mystery? Verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ before, by the gospel whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Look at verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs grafted into that tree and of the same body. Those who were in Christ before Paul. The same body. A body of people that was already there. The Gentiles was, were grafted into it. See, before the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was offering the kingdom of heaven, the thousand-year reign of Christ on earth, onto the Hebrews, the Jews, okay? They rejected that. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and shed his blood to make the perfect atonement for sin, okay? Went up to heaven. The gospel, the good news, was first given on to the Jews, the Hebrews, only. But... Collectively, they rejected that, and hence, us Gentiles were brought in to make them jealous, as we just see there in verse 11 in Romans 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. And today, in this dispensation, yes, a Jew can be saved. Yes, a Jew can become part of the church of the living God. Yes, yes, which is comprised of no distinction, salvifically, of Jew and Gentile, black, white, green, yellow, chartreuse, uh, Republican, Demokami. It doesn't matter, okay? Salvifically, there is no distinction. Culturally, ethnically, as they like to say, um, there is distinction. 
But in salvation, there is no different. A Jew today can be saved. And when the Lord saves, uh, said Jew, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 14. Thank you, Bart. In whom, all, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, sealed until the day of redemption, okay? Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. The redemption of the purchased possession. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. See, Catholicism teaches that Christians are going to go through the Great Tribulation. And indeed, Christians are. Absolutely. But the church of the living God, those who are truly saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus, we get redeemed before that time of Jacob's trouble, see. That's what Catholicism is not telling you. Okay, that is what they are not teaching you. That's why they like the Sermon on the Mount. It's all works. There's nothing, uh, there. faith is mentioned one time in the form of a rebuke. There's no mention at all of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. None of it. Okay, and the Sermon on the Mount is how it's going to be during the kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, people. Okay, these people are liars. Now let's continue this, okay? Let's continue this. Old Testament background. To begin, let's go back to the Old Testament and see what the prophets said Israel would be like once the Messiah came. And what are they quoting? Zephaniah 3, 9 and 10, and Zechariah 8, 20 through 23. Let's, let's read this in the scriptures. Go to Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Zephaniah, which is before Haggai, Zechariah, Haggai, Zephaniah. Zephaniah is after Habakkuk. Zephaniah chapter 3. What are they quoting? Verses 9 and 10. <laughs> For then will I turn to the people of pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, my daughter of my dispersed, the diaspora, the daughter of my dispersed, the daughter of his people Israel, shall bring mine offering. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Let's, let's read this in context, shall we? Let's read this in context. Zechariah chapter 3. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted, to the oppressing city. Oh boy, sounds bad for Israel, doesn't it? She obeyed not the voice, she received not correction, she trusted not in the Lord, she drew not near to her God. Her princes within her are roaring lions, her judges are evening wolves, they gnaw not the bones till the morrow. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons, her priests have polluted the sanctuary, they have done violence to the law. The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. I made their streets waste, that none passeth by. Their cities are destroyed, so that there is no man, that there is none inhabitant. I said, surely thou wilt fear me, thou wilt receive instruction, so their dwelling should not be cut off. However, I punished them, but they rose early and corrupted all their doings. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. See, that man of sin, the son of perdition, which is inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist, 
when we get caught up, the Church of the Living God, he's going to bring all nations together to be ruled by the volition of a single man that is himself the son of perdition, okay? So all these nations are going to be gathered together and they're all going to go against Israel, okay? Where our Lord is going to destroy all of them. You read about that in the book of Revelation, okay? So yes, the Lord will allow that man of sin, the son of perdition, to gather all nations together so that the, he may destroy them for coming against his, the apple of his eye, Israel, okay? Now we read verses 9 and 10. Let's read from verse 11 to the close of the chapter. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then will I take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. This is talking about when he comes back at his second coming. He sends us out, okay, to get rid of the evil people while the other people are brought back to him. It's not that we that anyone, there's not two catching a ways, but he sends us out, okay? Okay, to destroy the the wicked, okay? And to bring the uh, those onto him when he comes back at his second coming, see? It's not that they go up, okay? There's only one time in scripture where the church of the living God goes up, okay? That's the, uh, that's Revelation chapter 6. There's only one catching away. Okay? So, let's continue. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted people, an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. See, halfway during the, uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble, I believe, when that man of sin, the son of perdition, goes into the third rebuilt temple, He's going to look like the Catholic Jesus and he's going to say, I'm your God. And there's going to be that remnant of people of the Jews. It's going to be like, whoa, all those authorized version of the scriptures believers were telling us the truth all along. And whoa, we've missed it. But then again, during the, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be that mark of the beast. Okay, that's going to affect people's minds against the Lord. Okay, so there's going to be that remnant that has to endure to the end to be saved. Matthew chapter 24 talks about the time of Jacob's trouble. And that is that remnant that's being mentioned here. That's going to endure to the end to be saved. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Catholicism is not the daughter of Jerusalem, okay? The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath cast out thine enemy, Roman Catholicism, the king of Israel, even the Lord is in the midst of thee. And see, right there, thou shalt not see evil anymore. The son of perdition is going to come in trying to imitate, counterfeit this right here. The king of Israel, even, in, even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. He's going to come in, that son of perdition, going to come into that third rebuilt temple to try to counterfeit that right there. Okay. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save thee. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly, who are of thee, of Israel, of the Jews, of the Hebrews, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Driven out. Because once they realize 
that they've missed it and that we of the Church of the Living God who hold to the authorized version of the Scriptures we're telling them the truth and they see the abomination of desolation standing in the temple where it ought not they're going to be woe and they're going to flee to the mountains and see okay they're going to be dispersed okay okay uh, do we read, Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, we already read this, and will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you. I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. This is talking about Israel. The Jew, the Hebrew, okay? They're taking it out of context to suit their own purpose. And what is this they talk about? Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8, verses 20 on to verse 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, It shall come to pass that there shall come people, the inhabitants of many cities, and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Do they have that in there? Thus says the Lord of hosts, In those days ten men from the nations of every tongue, uh, not using scripture, of course, they're Catholics, shall take hold of the robe of a Jew, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. <laughs> now, let's read some context which Catholicism doesn't do. They don't encourage people to read the scripture. Of course, they read Bibles. Let's begin at verse 11 in Zechariah chapter 8. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, saith the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit. Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. And remember, Remember, the fig tree is synonymous with the Hebrew, Israel, Jewry, okay? And the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due, and I will cause the remnant of this people, the Hebrews, to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah, and house of Israel, making mention of the separated kingdoms, Israel and Judah, okay, which are of the Hebrews, of the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. So will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you, when your fathers provoked me to wrath, saith the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. And these aren't talking about the Catholic Church fathers, by the way. So again, have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah? Fear ye not. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor, and love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. Verse 17 plays into the Sermon on the Mount. Because remember, during the kingdom of heaven, okay? Remember, it's all works during the kingdom of heaven, okay? You don't forgive someone in the kingdom of heaven, guess what? You ain't going to be forgiven, okay? The kingdom of heaven is all works, Okay, so verse 17, in light of the Sermon on the Mount, which is for the kingdom of heaven, and let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor, and love no false oaths, 
oath, for all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. Okay? And the word of the Lord of hosts came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, The fast of the fourth month, and the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Uh, to the house of Judah? Joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love the truth and peace. Clearly, clearly speaking about Israel, the Hebrews, the Jews. These guys are lying. Okay? They say they are Jews, but they are not. Okay? Let's continue this nonsense. From these texts we can see that even though God may have separated the Israelites from their neighbors in the past, Leviticus 20.26, let's check that out. <laughs> Leviticus 20.26. See, when it comes to Catholicism, you really got to... <laughs> okay, Leviticus 20.26. 2026. Okay. And Leviticus, Levi, okay, talks about what? Talks about unto Levi, the Hebrews, okay? Uh, let's start from verse 22 on to verse 27. Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them that the land whither I bring you to dwell therein spew you not out. And ye shall not walk in the manner of the nation which I cast out before you. For they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it. A land that floweth with milk and honey, I am the Lord your God, which has separated, which have separated you from other people. Ye shall therefore put difference between clean beast and unclean, and between unclean fowls and clean. And ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast, or by fowl, or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. A man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, their blood shall be upon them. Now, remember, as we said before earlier, the law was given unto who? The law of Moses was given on to Israel, the Hebrews, the Jews, okay? This is making reference about statutes and judgments that pertain on to the law, okay? The point was in the Old Testament, okay? Yes, you read in Deuteronomy chapter 4 about how uh, his statutes, his commandments, his Sabbaths and whatnot were a sign, okay, that they had God living so close to them. They were to be the witness unto the nations of God. And under the Old Testament, if someone wanted to be right with God, they had to go to the Israelites, the Jews, the Hebrews, to learn about God and join themselves unto them to be right with God. Okay? What is similar in respects is that today in this dispensation, we don't have to keep, nobody, not even the Hebrew, has to keep the law to stay saved, be saved, or be right with God. But we, the church of the living God, as was Israel in the Old Testament, is God's ambassadors, having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. See, that's the similarity in that respect. All right? But see where it says here, where God separated them. Yes, they were to be God's example. But see, in the Old Testament, someone wanted to get to know God. Someone wanted to be right with God. huh? Someone wanted to be saved. In the Old Testament, they had to go to the Hebrew. They had to join themselves on to the Hebrew. They had to go under the law to do it. Okay? So 
So let's continue. From these texts, we can see that even though God may have separated the Israelites from their neighbors in the past, he did not want them to remain that way forever. There again, it is prophesied here in the scriptures that the kingdom of heaven would have been offered unto the Israelites, the Hebrews. They were going to reject it and that it would go to the Gentiles. Isaiah talks about that, yes. But see, had they accepted that, then none of this would have happened. We could argue that. It's a moot point because it was prophesied otherwise. But see, God is fair, just, and equal. Okay? He had to offer the kingdom of heaven unto the Jew first, or else he wouldn't be fair, right, and equal. He had to offer the gospel unto the Jew first, or else he wouldn't be fair, right, and equal. Remember, our Lord Jesus Christ referred unto the Gentiles as dogs. We have been grafted in by grace through faith into their tree, the tree that already existed there, you satanic devil Catholics. Okay? Okay? Let's continue this. No, his ultimate goal was for the rest of the world to one day be day join them and become part of his people too. And the, under the law, had to go through Israel. Today in this dispensation, a Jew, a Hebrew, can be part of the church of the living God if they come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord, okay? He wanted Israel to grow, to compass, to encompass the entire human race and become a multi-ethnic, a multinational family that worshipped him and lived in accordance with his law. And see, what Catholicism is doing, multi-ethnic, okay? Multi-ethnic. Bringing everybody together, just like at the Tower of Babel, which is in Genesis chapter 11, when man gets together, when all ethnicities get together, what happens we begin to build towers that reach up to heaven to make a name for ourselves. Okay? That's why God confounded, not confused, confounded their languages so that they couldn't understand one another. And then he separated them. God is a God of distinction. God likes them over here. They're there, they're there. He loves distinction. He loves variety. He loves the beauty of the kindreds. The beauty that comes from the kindreds, okay? But see, what Catholicism, just so that they can all be ruled by the volition of a single man, a melting plot, melting pot, to confound everybody, okay? To bring them all together, okay? In salvation, yes, there is no distinction. Do not forget, culturally or ethnically, there is distinction. But as far as salvation, doesn't matter. You're in Christ Jesus. You're saved by the blood of the crucified one. You came to him on his terms. It doesn't matter who you are or what you are. You are my brother or sister and vice versa. Okay. Let's continue. Let's continue. Easter. <laughs> New Testament fulfillment. And today we call that family the church. As St. Paul explains, Israel is like a tree. The Jews of Jesus' day as ethnic Israelites were all natural branches in this tree. And any Gentile, non-Jew, who join the church are like branches that are cut off from other trees and grafted into Israel. On the flip side, the Jews who rejected Jesus were cut off from their own family tree. Romans 11, huh? 17 through 24. As a result, we can see that the church doesn't simply replace Israel, neither, rather, in a very real sense, the church is Israel. <laughs> Go back to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. You wicked Catholics. And what are they quoting here? Uh... 17 on the verse 24. Okay? Now remember where we stopped. Let's read what they what they quote here. 
Actually, let's pick up from Romans 11, verse 12, okay? Now, we saw already that for verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. Oh, if you've ever met a truly converted Jew who is of the church of the living God, wow, if all of Jewry were like that, this world would be a different place. For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my own office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? And if some of the branches now here, oh, okay, verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, the first fruit be holy, the Hebrew, okay, it's to the Jew first. The lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches, okay? For if the first fruit be holy, God, the lump is also holy, Israel, the Jew, the Hebrew. And if the root be holy, our Lord Jesus Christ, so are the branches that are uh, in to that tree of the Jew, okay? And if some of the branches were broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, meaning the Gentile, were grafted in among them, among the body that already exists, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, root and fatness of the olive tree, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and this is exactly what Catholicism and all these wicked replacement theology coadjutor devils are doing. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. And what is the root? The root is the root of Israel, the Hebrew. Remember, salvation is of the Jew. Our Lord sprang of Judah. Okay? Okay, the roots bear thee, the body that was already there that we were grafted into. As we saw in verse 11, we are grafted in to make them jealous. And God have mercy on any Hebrew who joins himself with Catholicism. Oh, verse, and, and verse 9, 18 that Stephen Anderson and all that wicked flock of people out there. They boast themselves against the branches. They boast themselves against Israel. Absolutely they do. Verse 19. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he spare not thee. Okay? So take heed. To, uh, look at that again. For if God spared not the natural branches, the Jews, the Israel, uh, Israel, the Hebrews, because they partake of the root. The root is God. Okay? God chose Israel, the Hebrews. Okay? Okay? Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again, making reference unto this dispensation, that is, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. Today in this dispensation, they can come in to the church of the living God. Absolutely. Absolutely. But this dispensation is going to end when our Lord calls us up th hither. Okay? 
But yes, a Jew can be saved today. Absolutely. 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 But let's keep reading. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Salvation is of the Jew, the chosen line of the Hebrew, which from whence Christ came. The root is God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And he sprang of the Hebrew of Judah of Israel. Okay? Okay? Verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. Are you looking at that? Don't look at me. Look at the scriptures. That blindness in part is happened to Israel. In part. Until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the, re the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Jacob. Israel. Jacob. The Jew. Israel. Hebrews. Okay? Of that line of the Hebrew. Okay? This is what Catholicism isn't sharing with you. Okay? For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. For us, because they rejected, it came to us to make them jealous. And do you think Israel is jealous be, be, from what is Christian today? As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake that they, he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Father's sake. And it ain't the Catholic Church, Father. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. The Hebrews, the Jew, Israel is the apple of God's eye. This dispensation, yes, the time of the Gentile. Some call it the church age, which is problematic. But this time, this time of the Gentiles, okay? Yes, salvation is both to the Jew and to the Greek, which is a Gentile, okay? There is no distinction in salvation. Culturally, ethnically, yes. Salvifically, no. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. God chose the Hebrew. God chose that line from Shem, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's, there's no doing away with it. There's no doing away with it. No matter how Mystery Babylon wants to try to deceive you that there is. For as in times, for ye in times past have not believed God, yet now have obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might, that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depths of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord or who hath been his counselor or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. Yeah. These guys are devils. They're lying to you. They're twisting scripture and taking things out of context. Okay? God is not done with his people. Okay? We have been grafted into their tree, not the other way around. Okay? Let's continue this. As a result, we can see that the church doesn't simply replace Israel. Rather, 
in a very real sense, the church is Israel. <laughs> Look at those. <laughs> It, it is the multi-ethnic and multinational family made up of both Jew and Gentiles that the Old Testament prophets always said Israel would one day become. No, no. Israel means prince with God. Yes, yes, yes. But the Hebrew are God's chosen people. What they were mentioning was the coming dispensation which we enjoy today, okay? His Hebrews, okay, they were not allowed to mingle with other kindreds, okay? Why? Because from the Hebrews is where the Messiah would come, okay? Okay, God made exceptions of that, yes. But it is the multi-ethnic and multinational family made up of both Jews and Gentiles that the Old Testament prophets always said Israel would one day become. See, they're confusing Israel, Prince of God, and Israel, that is the Hebrew, the nation of the Jews. Okay? That's what they're confusing. That's what they're confounding. Okay? But we have to tread carefully here. As I said, the Jews who rejected Jesus were cut off from the tree of Israel. And this can still sound anti-Semitic if we don't understand their history in the Bible. I bet you Stephen Anderson would agree totally with all of this. The weaponizing of racial perception? <laughs> it was here. And then where were Rothschild employee Vladimir Lenin Payton painted the wall of anti-Semitism for Rothschild, poster boy for the banking cabal, to hide behind. This was the back door for Rothschild to expand control into the Middle East while exploiting the Christian population of Russia through centralizing their wealth to his foundry. Russia reopens criminal case into the murder of Tsar Nicholas II and his family as part of a Zionist ritual murder. <laughs> and of course, the Rothschilds, which sold out their people, the Hebrews, and worked for the Vatican, which uh, uh, are supplied by the Jesuit Federal Reserve. Okay? Nonsense. Nonsense. Rothschild Zionist Lenin. Rothschild Cabal hired Marx to craft a social political... <laughs> See, this is what Catholics do. They vilify the true Jews, the true Hebrews, Israel. They vilify them. Yeah, they attributed onto Marx what the Jesuits came up with in the Reductiones of Paraguay, okay? The Jesuits were the ones that came up with communism. They attributed it onto Marx, okay? Give me a break. Give me a break, okay? Marxism, a.k.a. communism, a.k.a. Sovietism, a.k.a. socialism, a.k.a. Rothschildism, I haven't heard that one for a while, to centralize a nation's wealth to the offer to the coffers of the BOE Rothschilds Bank of <laughs> um, the centralized uh, bank that's the creation of the Jesuits the Federal Reserve Bank. It was the Jesuit order that wanted to centralize banking, especially here in America. At the inception of America, that's not how it was to be, okay? And see, see, what they're doing is they're, make, they're vilifying the true Jews, true Israel. They're vilifying the Hebrews, just like what Catholicism always does. Remember, the centerpiece of World War II for... Catholicism was the extermination of the Jew. Okay? Don't forget that. 
Don't forget that. <laughs> Vladimir Lenin was the first, what is that? Goon used by Rothschilds to usury Russia and rename it the USSR. Uh, Vladimir Lenin was first used of the Jesuits, but he cared about his people. Then they went to the other guy who was uh, trained by Jesuits and fulfilled the Jesuits' plan in World War Three and uh, World War Two. Okay, what nonsense! What you can read about this in the the secret history of the Jesuits. I got the link for it on the channel here. Go check it out. Okay, Gorbachev. The last Soviet Rothschild goon was removed from office on Christmas Day, 1991. Gorbachev was in office for about as long as the overthrown Rothschild president in Egypt, who now is in prison facing murder charges against the people. The U.S. media made a hero out of this piece. Oh, my. Who is in the U.S. In implementing Agenda 21 with Nancy Pelosi in the background? Okay, is this okay? Well, sorry about that. I didn't notice the curse word. Back to the biblical. The Old Testament, the scriptures of the Israel Israelites themselves, is essentially the story of their continual disobedience and rebellion against God. Time and time again, they rejected God's laws and went after other deities. And it eventually got to, to so bad that God told a large portion of them, You are not my people, and I am not your God. Hosea 1.9 <laughs> Then in the very next verse, he promised to eventually save them and make them his people once again at some point in the future. Hosea 1.10 This tells us that God always loves and cares for Israel, but large portions of the nation can cut themselves off from him and become, in a very real sense, no longer his people. And that's exactly what happened during the time of Jesus. But the what, what does that say? What does it say here? In Romans chapter 11, um, verse 29, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Yes, some Jews rejected, or yeah, got cut off, but in a sense, due to the promise unto the fathers of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Eh, very wicked what this, whoever wrote this is doing. This tells us that God always, okay, the majority of Jews rejected him, so they cut themselves off from God. As a result, when we say that they were no longer his people, we are saying nothing that the Old Testament, the scriptures of Israel, didn't already say. We are being no more anti-Semitic than Hosea or any of the other prophets of ancient Israel. <laughs> but see... What they're doing is that the fulfillment of Israel is in the church. And on to them, the church is the building. No, the fulfillment of Israel is in the kingdom of heaven. When, during the time of Jacob's trouble, Israel, Jewry, that is left, is going to come to the realization that Jesus is their Messiah. Okay? Very, very deceptive here. Furthermore, along with the Old Testament, the church also affirms that God still loves those Israelites who have been cut off from his people. Just as Hosea said that God would one day re rescue his wayward children. So too, do we affirm that the Jews, even to this day, are still beloved for the sake of their forefathers, for the gift and the calling of God are irrevocable. Yeah. And look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Vatican City. With an obelisk, which is a male phallic symbol, okay? 
the new Israel's vocation. Okay. Given that the church truly is Israel, what practical consequences does this have for our spiritual lives? What difference does it make that we are God's people just like the ethnic Israelites were in the Old Testament? In a nutshell, it means that we have inherited the vocation of ancient Israel. Ah, in the Old Testament, God said that he chose Israel to be his own possession among all peoples. Me a kingdom, a, be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Exodus 19, 5 through 6. Now this description of Israel's vocation may seem rather opaque to, a, to us 21st century Americans, but it would have made perfect sense to its original audience. The key is that the Israelites were supposed to be God's priests in the midst of the nations. We normally think of priests as people who celebrate mass and run parishes, but the office is actually much broader than that. A priest is essentially someone who medi mediates between God and humanity. He stands before God as a representative of the people and before the people as a representative of God. More specifically, in ancient Israel, priests taught the people God's laws, Leviticus 10.11, and blessed them, the Aaronic blessing, so that what the Israelites were supposed to do they were supposed to teach the surrounding nations God's laws and impart his blessing to them. In other words, they were supposed to evangelize the rest of mankind and bring them back to the worship of the true God. In the Old Testament, people could come to them, but they were not going out to other people. They had Moses preached in every city. Yes, yes, but... They were to come to them to see the example set by Israel being his nation. See, very deceptive, very deceptive. Yes, they were to be evangelistic. Yes, but they were to bring people on to them. Okay, this, this is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most specific, more specifically in ancient Israel's Israel priests taught the people God's laws and blessed them. So that's what the Israelites were supposed to do. They were su supposed to teach the surrounding nations God's laws and impart his blessings to them, his blessing to them. In other words, they were supposed to evangelize the rest of mankind and bring them back to the worship of the one true God. But there again, remember, those were, who were of the nations were to ditch what they believed and join themselves onto the Jews and get uh, put themselves under the law. Okay? Not like today. Not like today. Okay? They were set there to be God's example onto the nations. And they were to inquire of them. Okay? They were to come to them because they would see the example that they were living. They were to see their example of how God was so close to them. In other words, the nations were to be jealous of Israel. And see, God today in this dispensation has turned that, that Israel is to be jealous of the nations, see. To be jealous, uh, to be provoked to jealousy by grafting us Gentiles into their tree, see. Mm. And as the new Israel, we now have this same vocation. In fact, the New Testament describes the church in a way that calls to mind what God said about Israel in Exodus. But ye are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. They're quoting 1 Peter. Just as Israel was God's own possession, a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. So too is the church, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. And see, when they say church, they're, they're talking about Catholicism. Okay? 
And that is how it is today in this dispensation. Okay? But see, they are teaching that it is a permanent thing. No. This time of the Gentiles ends with the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. That is what they are not telling you. They are teaching you or are trying to tell you that this is how it is. No. No. This time of the Gentiles ends with the redemption of the purchased possession people. That's what they're not telling you. Furthermore, this verse even tells us what this means, just like the Israelites in the Old Testament. <laughs> Christians today are God's priests in the midst of the human race in order to declare the wonderful deeds of God. We're supposed to evangelize the rest of mankind and bring them back to the worship of the one true God. Oh, and look at that. Isn't that pretty? We're all mission. Oh, we're all missionaries. A Viking, a Catholic Saint, Vladimir, the founder of Russia. Now, this doesn't mean that we all have to become professional missionaries and go to faraway lands preaching to people who have never heard about Jesus before. Some people are called to do that. But most of us are called to spread the gospel in much less dramatic ways. We are supposed to evangelize, however, we can, use, we can using whatever appropriate uh, opportunities God gives us. Sometimes that simply means showing our faith through our lo loving actions. And sometimes that means having to speak up and explain or defend the faith when people ask questions or bash the church. Simply put, we all have to prudently discern how we can best spread the gospel and bring others to Christ, thereby fulfilling our vocation as the new Israel to be God's priestly people among the nations. And that comes from the Catholic Exchange. What is this? Roman, oh, William Raw. Oh, oh, and look at that. Talks about Guy Fawkes. Birth of the Confederate flag, Catholic Church versus Freemasonry, NWO, Rothschilds. Yeah, I don't know who wrote this, but yeah, yeah, yeah. See, what, what they are doing is they're speaking half-truths, okay? Yes, today, we as the Church of the Living God, which is comprised of both Jew and Gentile, yes, we are to go out and evangelize, absolutely. Absolutely. And in the Old Testament, yes, nations were to come to them because they would see, beg your pardon, brethren, they were to see, they were to see the example of God's people living with God, with God living uh, amongst them and stuff like that. Okay. Yes. But see, this dispensation, see, they're not rightly dividing the word of truth, dear friend. This dispensation ends with the catching away. But see, Catholicism wants you to believe that it's going to be this way during the time of Jacob's trouble, which they call the Great Tribulation. Hence, that's why you got these filthy scumbags, these easy believism devil heretics telling you to save yourself by you just believing. See? Hence, you get into the time of Jacob's trouble, you got to take that mark. Hey, don't worry. You're saved because you just believe. Or God loves everybody. Very deceptive. Very deceptive. Very dangerous. This dispensation, dear people, this dispensation is coming to an end. And when this dispensation ends, what begins is the time of Jacob's trouble. And during that time, Okay, salvation is by faith and works. Okay, you take the mark of the beast, you're going to hell, no ifs, ands, or buts. Okay, no ifs, ands, or buts. All right, you're going to go to hell and burn forever. No one is eternally secure in the time of Jacob's trouble except for the 144,000 Jews of Israel of the Hebrews. So, 
Be careful, dear friend. Be careful of the lies of Catholicism and of all her daughters that work for her and all her agents that work for her. Be very careful and cautious of these people. Be cautious. That is going to be it for this video. Uh, because I made the error and accidentally stopped this, I'm going to use that video thing and put these together. So hopefully it will turn out. Uh, so it's going to be, it's 1247 p.m. when I'm close to stopping this. Uh, however long it's going to take, it's going to, going to take. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you dearly, dearly beloved for sharing this. Um, like I said, the link for this will be in the description box. <laughs> Brethren, we're, get, we're almost there. We're almost there. We need to be vigilant and continue to fight until the Lord says, come up hither. So it's going to be it for this video. Uh, there are going to be a couple of videos coming this uh, the remainder of this week, Lord willing, uh, that are going to be shorter than normal. So um, going to be kind of similar to this. So thank you, brethren. We love you. Thank you for your prayers. Please continue to pray for us. We will see you in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.